and like stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, just search on my name. You'll see it. Okay, number five, a crate going up an incline. Good problem. A lot of times we did crates coming down an incline. This one's being pushed up an incline. This is a little bit more complex than, I, I, on, a, on a category of one to ten for an exam problem, I would probably put this around an eight or a nine. So if I give you a bunch of problems like this, or I mean if I give you problems like this, it'll only be like about four of them. This is, this is a fairly in-depth problem, but it captures a lot of concepts. We've got the 65 kilogram crate. The incline is 25 degrees. We want to push it up the incline so that it accelerates at 7 meters per second squared. Um, and it tells us Friction. It gives us a coefficient of friction. So we get to use friction in our problem. Aren't you guys excited? Now, after we sketch it, what did we do after that? What was the next thing? Draw in the forces. Right. What forces do we have on this box? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, whoa, whoa. Gravity. What direction is the gravity? Straight down. It's always straight down. What direction is the normal force? Perpendicular to the surface. Why in class everyone is always able to say it's perpendicular to the surface, but on the test you're going to give me some other crazy angle and it's like, what? Perpendicular to the surface. Any other forces? Friction, friction because I give you the coefficient of friction, which is opposite the... Uh, direction of motion and any other forces why is there no tension but I want to make this box accelerate up the incline in order for it to accelerate what do you need you need a force now notice what I said in order to accelerate it, okay? I can also give you a problem where the box might be going down the incline. It's not accelerating. If it's not accelerating, does that mean there's a force on it? Wait a minute, did I say that right? If it's not accelerating, is there a force? No. If there's no force, can it be moving? Yes. If there's no force, that means one of two things is going on. It's sitting still or it's moving at a constant speed. Remember, no acceleration simply means it's a constant speed. Constant speed could be zero. Make sure you keep that because we did a lot of problems where there is no, um, where there is a constant speed. Any other forces? That, that looks, that's pretty good. That's enough to deal with. I just call it F, a tension force. Yeah, yeah. But that's the force that's pulling it up. That's what the problem is. And so what we want to calculate, we want to calculate this. How much force is required to pull this thing up so that it accelerates at 7 meters per second squared? We've got to fight gravity and we have to fight friction. What's the next step in this problem? The force table. Now, before we get to the force table, what I like to do is identify what my coordinate system is. So I'm saying up the ramp is x, perpendicular to ramp is y. And then we get into the force table. What's the purpose of the force table? To break the forces down into the x and y. This is what problem number one is. Problem number one gives you a bunch of vectors. You have to break each vector into the x and y. And then add up all the x vectors. Add up all the y vectors. And that gives you the total vector. And we're going to do the same thing except with forces. All right? Yay. Let's get going. x and y. What's the first force you want to do? 
gravity, okay. FG, we'll do the hardest one first. That's fine. That's my, that's my negative y direction. And so I've got some gravity in my negative x and in my negative y. I've got gravity in a little bit of both. Now, what is, what's this angle right there? 25 degrees, same as my incline. Do the geometry, you can figure that out. Now, let's see. This length is the direction in my x. Um, opposite is sine. So it's negative fg sine 25. And then for my y, y is going down, it's negative fg cosine 25. There, we have our gravity broken up. Any questions on that? That's the hardest one. The, this x is the component of gravity. We will take care of the, we'll take care of that for separately. Because it's in the negative direction. This one's in the negative y direction. It's going, it's going down. Oh, it's, remember the length of that, of this vector is fg, is my weight. And so the component is simply the cosine times the hypotenuse, fg. And we're going to substitute in mass times gravity later on. Did you have a question? Never mind. Okay. What force do we want to do next? The tension force. I heard that first from Holly. F. It's all in the x direction. None in the y. Normal force. I heard that second. Um, normal force is all in the y, none in the x. Friction force is last. It's all in the negative x. So my frictional force is all in the negative x, none in the y. What do all my... Now, in the y direction... Do I have an acceleration of the box? No. So the sum of all my forces in the y is zero. Remember, when you sum up the forces, you get one of two answers, zero or ma. There's no, there's no, I, I don't want to say no motion in the y, but it's not being accelerated any place in the y. So my net force has to be zero. What about my x? Am I having an acceleration in the x? The problem tells me it's um, 7 meters per second squared, so it's ma. At this point, the physics is done. Now we're just going to do some algebra. And we're going to solve for our tension force. And that's, that's all that's left. Yes, Ashley. 